Some of Colorado's toughest professionals are learning there is nothing weak about talking about your struggles. You know, it is a very macho industry. And people show up, they, they work hard, um, but we never talk about mental health issues. A Republican candidate for governor has a new idea on how to win. Stop counting each vote equally. New technology developed in our state helps people with mobility challenges drive again by just thinking about it. And horses help build Colorado. They're essential to the image of the state we love, yet they're often treated like they're disposable. We can help with that. Don't just watch, join us, make an impact, because this is next. Silence is killing construction workers in Colorado. Not a, a job site danger per se, it's the fact that they're not talking about mental health. Construction regularly ranks first or second among industries in terms of suicide deaths. With Colorado dotted these days with new construction, this is the perfect place for a first of its kind conversation, talking openly, saving lives. Here's Katie Eastman. Some signs and symptoms of this conference room in Denver is full of people who want to stop their colleagues from dying. When I first started in the construction industry, we didn't talk about mental health issues. You know, it is a very macho industry. Jerry Shoup is the corporate up, director of safety and health for Hensel Phillips. The Construction Working Mind Summit says a thousand construction workers die on the job every year. But each year, 5,000 die by suicide, too. The first quote I heard was that when you start talking about this, you're going to start hearing about it. And within two weeks of my first training, I was actually helping someone who was having a mental health issue. Hensel Phillips, a Colorado-based company, now trains employees about signs and symptoms of a mental health crisis so they can become a bridge to resources. They began this training five years ago when they learned from the CDC that men working in construction have a suicide rate about four times higher than the general population. I'm not surprised, you know, it's, it's a stressful job. Jose Vallejo started working in construction after his career in the military. Before I started this training, it, uh, I didn't know how to handle it, you know, and I know how to get them help now. Before, I was a guy who was like, well, how can I fix it? We can't fix it. It's, I'm, not, I'm not trained, I'm not a professional, I can't fix it. I need to be able to at least know where to send them. The people in this room will not become mental health experts after this week, but they'll leave with a new sense of what macho really means in the construction industry. And as soon as you change that mentality, it'll start getting better, I think. For next, I'm Katie Eastman. So why the construction industry in suicides? The people who study this think it's a combination of working in a high pressure environment, the physical injuries of the job, and often having to travel away from the support of family and friends to work. If you or somebody that you know is struggling with mental health, there is help out there, someone to talk to right now. Not a referral, not a pass off, real help right away. The number for Colorado Crisis Services is 844-493-8255. Text the word talk to 38255. The very last thing that a racist and misogynistic killer saw on this earth was a female police officer taking aim and taking him out. We're hearing for the first time from the Lakewood police agent who ended a mass shooter's killing spree last December. Agent Ashley Ferris was shot that night. She knew that there was a killer on the loose when she heard the radio call for another shooting in Lakewood. The shooter had been targeting tattoo shops in Denver, so she headed to a tattoo shop nearby. And sure enough, the killer walked right up to her, wearing a police vest and loading magazines. She says she asked who he was and where he's coming from. She says that's when he started to draw, and she drew, and the shooting started. Agent Ferris was hit, but she got in her shot. The killer, who had published an alt-right manifesto about his desire to subjugate women, was taken off this planet by one in defense of her community. I think it's excellent that it was me because I was small enough where they could throw me in a patrol car when I was injured and get me to the hospital quick. Um, I do think the irony is kind of beautiful. But, you know, other than that, it's just happenstance that it was me. What irony are you talking about? Well, that guy didn't like women so much, so. The shot that hit Agent Ferris hit her sciatic nerve and her right leg was paralyzed. Two surgeries and a lot of physical therapy later, she's now able to walk again without a cane or a limp. Coloradans have elected just one Republican governor in the last 50 years. 
A current GOP candidate for governor has an idea that could change that. Stop counting each vote equally. Look, numbers don't lie. Numbers have not been kind to Republican candidates in Colorado like Greg Lopez. So Lopez is suggesting that Colorado eliminate the principle of one person, one vote. At a May 15th campaign stop in rural San Juan County, Lopez outlined a plan that would weight the votes of rural counties through a statewide electoral college system. A political tracker recorded Lopez's proposal. It's not based on population. It's going to be based on voter turnout. So the higher your voter turnout is, the more electoral college votes you're going to get. Because we want people to participate. The Lopez campaign did not answer our questions about the details of the plan. So we analyzed the 2018 race for governor based on what we do know about Lopez's proposal. 11 electoral votes for the counties with the highest voter turnout. Three electoral votes for the counties with the lowest turnout. Democratic Governor Jared Polis' 10 percentage point win in 2018, it would turn into a blowout Republican victory under Lopez's plan. A 28 point shift toward Republicans so long as you don't count each vote equally. It's not about one person, one vote. It's about true representation. Lopez's idea of true representation would look like this. In our analysis, the 2013 combined voters in Hinsdale, Kiowa, and Mineral Counties would have a total of 33 electoral votes, more than double the 14 electoral votes of Denver, Arapahoe, and Adams counties combined 761,873 voters. First of all, I don't think this is something that's likely to pass in Colorado. But DU Assistant but Professor of Political Science Sarah no, Chatfield says voters are not likely to put an electoral college into the state constitution. And the Supreme Court struck down a similar plan in Alabama in 1964. So I think that case, although it's a little different, demonstrates that just because something is in the U.S. Constitution doesn't mean it's actually democratic or constitutional at the state level. The Lopez campaign said that they would only discuss details of the Electoral College proposal if we did a second extended interview with Lopez. You can watch how the first one went on the next YouTube channel. Lopez has the top line on the ballot for the GOP primary in June versus Heidi Ganahl. The city of Denver is rolling out a new program that will char charge certain property owners a new fee. The fee is for people who want to rent out their property. Now, if history is a guide, some people will pay and some won't. Because this new fee is right on the heels of a, another fee-based program that failed. In that one, the city forced certain property owners to fix their sidewalks. Until they didn't anymore. Here's Marshall Zellinger. She's got wheels, but Phyllis Mack would prefer not to be in the road. Oh, no. <laughs> There's no way, because the cars are up to the curb. She and her scooter often scoot in the street. It's very dangerous. The issue around her apartment near Ruby Hill, small sidewalks. Elsewhere in the city, it's uneven sidewalks. Sometimes my chair will stop on me, and I'm stuck unless somebody helps me. For a short time, there was a program in the city of Denver that required property owners to fix their sidewalks. The city was divided into 11 regions, and each region would be inspected every year, taking 11 years. Citing financial hardships due to the pandemic, the program paused in Region 1. I paid about $8.50 uh, for them to level it out. Laura Dean lives in Region 1, south of Spear and Grant. Needless to say, she's not too happy that she's one of 749 property owners who paid to fix their sidewalk before the program stopped. I definitely am a proponent of the ADA and I do believe that we should have sidewalks that are working and safe for people. But if no one else in the city is having to do this, that doesn't seem very fair. There's an effort to get an issue on the November ballot to charge every Denver property owner a fee to build and repair sidewalks citywide. That proposal would not reimburse Laura for the work she already paid for. Separate from the separating sidewalks, Denver is also starting a licensing requirement for property owners who rent their homes. Private inspectors will go out, people will have to have an inspection, and that house is going to have to have minimal housing standards. Eric Escudero is the spokesman for the city's Department of Excise and Licenses, which will handle the rental licenses. Starting in January, owners of multi-unit rentals will be required to have a license. Starting in January 2024, owners of single-family rentals will need one. And if you sign up early, the $50 dollar application fee is cut in half. But what's to say the rental license program won't also be where the sidewalk ends? You compare two government programs, it's really comparing apples to oranges.
when it comes to the rental license, you are also required to get an inspection so that the city knows you have a livable place for the people that are paying for that rent. There's also the argument, Kyle, that when you have a new license that the people renting will be paying that license fee so that the landlord just passes it along. The argument is, hey, but we know they're going to have a livable place to live. Maybe they won't pass that cost along. The sidewalk thing. I asked the city, will you reimburse the people in Region 1 for the work they did that no one else had to do? The city is still working on what may happen to that program if it may get re-implemented or not. And they don't have an answer on if they would reimburse people. Both of these kind of sound like an honesty tax to me. All right. Thank you, Marshall. Horses are part of what makes Colorado special, or so we like to say. Because the reality is, when once beloved horses are too old or too injured to be ridden anymore, they're often abandoned to be euthanized or sold for slaughter. There are Coloradans, though, working to find homes for beautiful horses that have a lot of life left after somebody else has decided that they're disposable. Your Word of Thanks Micro Giving campaign this week supports Colorado Horse Rescue, where they save horses that are destined to die so they can find them new loving homes. Caring for horses is expensive, and that is why Colorado Horse Rescue strives to find a good home for each horse with no judgment for the prior owner. Two-thirds of their horses are surrendered by those former owners. One-third are saved from kill buyers at auctions, where the nonprofit is out there bidding against people who are planning to ship those horses to slaughterhouses. The folks at Colorado Horse Rescue said something that really s stuck with me as somebody who's never had a horse but has loved a lot of pets. They're saying that, you know, when dogs we love are too old to go hiking with us in Colorado, we don't euthanize our dogs, but horses that can't be ridden are often cast aside and killed. Luckily, there are Coloradans willing to adopt them once they've been rescued. If you scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491, I will send you the link to donate. I'll never ask you to give to a cause that I don't support myself, so I'll match the first 50 people to kick in $5. Colorado says it loves horses. Our actions don't always match our words. Tonight, though, together, they can. He's not some new teenage driver. My accident, uh, I don't have no mobility below my waist, so uh, this is my first time driving the car, yeah. He's getting a second chance to learn to drive, thanks to technology developed in Colorado. And one of your favorite questions for years has been, where do our state's pot taxes go? Well, let's go see next. More than 50 young people from Adams County are getting help with college thanks to Coloradans who got high. It's assistance from a program that answers one of your favorite questions ever since Next began. What about the pot tax? In Adams County, the pot tax funds college scholarships for kids in need. Last night, the county awarded 58 four-year scholarships. County collected about half a million dollars in cannabis tax revenue last year. Colorado's Department of Higher Ed matches that dollar for dollar, and that's how they gave out a million dollars in scholarships last night. Some of those recipients are the first in their family to go to college. Tracking evening thunderstorms tonight. Fire danger will be high tomorrow with record highs possible. And a winter storm watch goes out for Denver on Friday for accumulating snowfall. 83 in Denver today could go warmer tomorrow. Tracking those severe storms in southeastern Colorado with rain and lightning, wind damage. And the winds will really increase out of the southwest with a red flag warning posted on Thursday. A winter storm watch goes out Friday into Saturday for heavy wet snow that could take down tree branches and power lines. And then when skies clear out Friday night, temperatures will fall below freezing and tender plants will need protection. So 88, red flag morning Thursday, rain and snow with colder weather Friday and Saturday. Slowly we break out of it Sunday with thunderstorms back in the Monday forecast. It's a sign that may not be accurate for Denver's current weather conditions, but I'll leave it out there long enough. Actually, you know what? This was up in Boulder. Wendy was there when she spotted this sign warning of potential ice on the ground. Never mind the fact that it was 70 uh, last Friday in Boulder when she saw this. At this point, uh, we're still in May, so just leave the sign out, guys. Boulder's expected to drop into the 40s this Friday. Showers and thunderstorms turning into snow late Friday night. It'll be useful then. 
Send us the signs you see in your neighborhood. Email photos to next at 9news.com or give us a shout on Twitter with the hashtag HeyNext. Technology from our state is helping people with paraplegia experience speed. We then, of course, the speed limit. Our goal is not to make race car drivers out of spinal cord injured patients. It's really to apply this to real world situations. That's next. Mind control is real. Uh, not like your uncle's Facebook post about Gil Bill Gates and vaccine microchips. Actual technology to help people with mobility challenges use their mind to get around. The tech got a test drive down in the Springs today. Hi, German. I got all okay. my pillows. Who's got your pillows? Uh, it wasn't a thought of mine. I never would have thought I would be able to do this. German sustained his spinal cord injury when he was 16 before he got his driver's license. Since my accident, I don't have no mobility below my waist, so this is my first time driving the car, yeah. And we said, oh, and by the way, you're going to drive this car hands-free, feet-free, and you're going to have to think about it. All right, all right. An electrode is placed on the surface of the brain and can capture thought. The electrode's on a part of the brain that initiates movement. So for him, he thinks about squeezing his hand the computer can pick that particular electronic fingerprint and feed that to the race car. It's unbelievable, like, to think about being in the car, to be in it and just watch how you go through the track smoothly and it responds to what you think. It's just incredible. That was sick, man. That was sick. Our goal is not to make race car drivers out of spinal cord injured patients. It's really to apply this to real world situations. So we can use this potentially for driving an electric wheelchair, a golf cart, control a robotic arm. So the, although we're doing it for the complexities of driving a car, that science can be used for all types of systems. Technology is advancing, so we got to help put our part in it and make it become available for everyone. That's pretty spectacular. Coloradans love animals. Dogs and cats, no doubt. Horses? Our track record doesn't always show that. This week, we are helping the Coloradans who rescue horses and find happy homes where they can live out their later years. That and your feedback next. The good folks at Colorado Horse Rescue go to auctions where older horses, horses that aren't seen as valuable anymore, are auctioned off and sometimes end up in slaughterhouses. One horse they rescued recently came back from the auction and really started gaining weight. And that's when they realized she was pregnant. Whimsy and her full flower are doing well today and both will end up in wonderful new homes. That's what Colorado Horse Rescue does. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to join me in giving to this organization that helps horses, especially those that can't be ridden anymore, find wonderful homes where they can live out the rest of their natural lives. Jeff Moore writes in tonight to say, I am conflicted on your coverage of Greg Lopez, Republican candidate for governor. Jeff says, I appreciate your highlighting his agenda and initiatives, but I'm concerned that this coverage legitimizes his views. So here's the deal, Jeff. Uh, he's got the top line on the Republican primary ballot because Republican voters at the state assembly liked him that much. It's our job to tell you what these candidates believe, what they would do, and then it's up to voters, first in the primary and then the general election, to decide what you believe. See you next time.